Welcome back to my channel. My name is Esteban Andrade, but wait a minute. I'm gonna get very real with you. Listen to me. A lot of you REIpreneurs, investors, wholesalers, and flippers have a lot of issues when it comes down to growing their team and growing their business, going to the next level. I've been helping investors and wholesalers for over four years and a half since 2019 to grow their business through digital marketing systems and great talented people. Where we do their marketing, we do their systems, we help them with sales, and we actually place them team members in their business. And I have noticed that these four major things have not helped them take their business to their next level. But the good thing is that the people that are doing millions of dollars a year and continuously have been clients of ours for years, and this is over three years of being with us, have actually overcame these four things. The first thing is shiny object syndrome. A lot of businesses in the real estate investing and wholesaling space actually suffer from this disease. And this disease means that you start a marketing channel and you wanna do something else the next month. Instead of trying to focus your whole effort into that one marketing channel and actually go all in into that. Or maybe you buy another piece of software and you wanna change to another piece of software two months after that. This happens with everything from team members, software, coaching, education, trips, anything that has to do with you being distracted on not doing the things that you're supposed to do in order to drive revenue, all of that is gonna be shiny object syndrome. But at the same time, if you start something, go all in into that something for at least six months and you'll see that the results are gonna be much better. At the beginning, you being an entrepreneur and trying to figure out things without getting some sort of traction, it was good enough for you to try different, different, multiple things, right? At the end of the day, you wanna know what fits you the best. But once you start having some sort of traction, closing one, two, three deals, and you know that something's gonna work, you wanna be able to go all in into that and actually take advantage of that thing until you know that it works or it doesn't really work. And whether it's a piece of software, whether that's a marketing channel, whether that's a new hire that you have, whether that's a new coaching program, whether that's a new technique on how to close deals, whether that's a new method on doing something new, whether that's single family, multifamily, Airbnb, rentals, doesn't really matter. You have to actually do it for a consistent amount of time. Remember that consistency is one of the biggest things that you need to have in order to grow your business and grow as an entrepreneur. If you don't have this behavior, it's gonna be very, very hard for you actually to do something about growing your business to seven figures. As an example, we've had a few clients that they come in, they start doing digital marketing, and the month two or three, they wanna do also direct mail, but they also wanna hire this new AI cold caller in order to get more deals. And what happens is that they get distracted from closing deals from the first thing that they invested in. And I see this happening over and over with people that take multiple coaching programs or courses and they get super distracted and they don't know where to start. So if you start with a coaching program, make sure to get the most out of that coaching program squeeze the juice out of that coaching program, do everything that that coaching program tells you to do and figure out if that's the thing that it's really gonna take you to the next level. And you can figure that out in the first few weeks and months by doing the daily activities that they tell you to do. If it is a new marketing channel, make sure to give it a four to six months of actual stamina in your head because otherwise you're gonna get distracted by new things that are gonna pop out every single time. A new AI thing is gonna come out at some point, a new version of something else is gonna come out at some point, but if you don't get tunnel focused, this is gonna distract you from the main thing. The second thing that I see a lot of investors and wholesalers actually fail at is not having a lot of patience and stamina. Let me talk to you about what that means. When you start a new marketing channel, when you start a new t technology, when you start a new something new, it's gonna take a little bit of a learning curve at the very beginning. You're gonna not know how to work something that is new for you, whether that's an inbound channel, whether that's an outbound channel, whether that's a new team member, a new hire, a new piece of technology, and you have to learn how to deal with that as fast as possible. But if you don't think about this as a long-term thing, it's gonna be very hard for you to even be successful with it. Most marketing channels are gonna take about six months for them to actually hit a return of advertising spent. That means that the moment that you start that with that marketing channel and the campaign is launched from day one all the way to the day that you get money in your pocket, 
That is going to take about four to six months for majority of marketing channels. On average, where you're taking outbound marketing channels and inbound marketing channels, that's about the time. Outbound marketing channels might take longer. I've seen outbound marketing channels actually taking seven to nine months to actually get money in the bank after you start the campaign. So that means that you have to have a stamina and patience about that marketing channel for it to happen. Why do you think that outbound marketing channels have such a low barrier of entry and anyone can cold call, do SMS marketing, or even drive for dollars, door knocking, and so on by doing all this outbound approach, whether that's DMs on Facebook groups, SMS marketing, cold calling, you name it. And inbound marketing channels have another cash conversion cycle, which means that you have to be patient for at least four to six months to actually have a return of investment. If you don't set that proper expectation on yourself, you're not going to be able to work it out. And that also means that you're going to be rushed towards getting results. This is not a get rich quick scheme, which means that you actually have to have a budget aside, a money and capital aside to make this work for the long term. If you don't make this work for the long term, you're not in the right industry. You're not in the right space. That means that you should be doing either e-commerce, selling a product that you can get the money the next day or the day after you do the sale. With real estate, that doesn't happen. Remember that with real estate, you launch your campaign, you get the lead, you start the sales process, negotiate, get it on the contract, and after you get it on the contract, you need to be able to go through the entire process to get the buyer and then assign it to the buyer or be able to sell that deal after you have done a fix and flip, novation, or any type of contract assignment. And if that's a creative deal, you're not gonna get money until like months, months, years ahead, right? So you have to even be more patient and understand what type of game you're playing. Once you do that, you're gonna be set. Your mind is gonna be better, and that means that every single month that the money is gonna get extracted from your bank account, from Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, direct mail, it's gonna be negative in the first two, three months. But that's completely normal. That's completely okay. Because now you have the expectation that this is a long-term play. You have stamina and patience. And then to my third point is that a lot of people suck at this. And that is called F you. And no, it's not fuck you. It's actually follow up. So following up is one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't have. At the beginning in my business, I had no follow-up. I did not know how to follow up with people because I was just trying to go for the new thing or the new lead ahead. But the good thing is that now you know through this video that follow-up is one of the biggest levers that you can pull because now you're actually getting money from the same leads that you have actually generated in the past. You already have paid for that lead. You already have paid for that opportunity. How do you get the most of that opportunity? Make sure that you have a trackable way to do follow-up with the leads. Whether you have spoken with the lead and they have not taken action with you right now, but they're gonna take action with you in the future, make sure that you have a trackable sheet and a trackable CRM that allows you to follow up with these people. I actually have a hot list in my CRM in a stage called hot list that helps me remember who are the people that I need to go and follow up with every single week. And also I have people that are in a nurturing stage that allows me to nurture them through automations and workflows and AI chatbots that will send them an email, send them a text message every week, every other week, every month, and always stay on top of mind. And when they're ready, we're gonna be able to send them a reactivation campaign. A reactivation campaign, which I've done a video about this before, you can check it out in my YouTube channel, is going to re-engage, reactivate, and wake up people from the death after you engage them with a re-offer. This is a technique where you have to do every month or every two weeks that allows you to get people that are interested about selling their house at that specific moment. If you incorporate this in your systems, in your follow-up process, you're gonna get better results and more money from the same ad spend that you already had which is the same leads that are in your pipeline. And I'm pretty sure you have a lot of leads just sitting in the pipeline. For this reason, it's also important to have a follow-up specialist and a chatbot that allows you to send those reactivation campaigns, call all those leads, 
text message all those leads, send emails to the, all those leads and continuously hit all those leads that are already in your pipeline. You can hire people, for example, from remotelatinos.com that are follow-up specialists or lead managers and appointment setters that will help you follow up with every single prospect that is in your pipeline. Another good thing that you can do about following up is taking our trainings that we already have put together in our YouTube channel about following up property. Remember that once a lead comes in, you have very few seconds to get a hold of them before they again become a little bit warmer. If they're hot right here at the top of the funnel, where now they have submitted a form or book an appointment with you, they're gonna become warmer, 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 and colder if you don't get a hold of them fast enough. Remember, this is a very competitive space. That means that if people are actually submitting forms, booking appointments with you, they're also seeing other ads in Google, in Facebook, in YouTube of other advertisers, other wholesalers. That means that they're also gonna submit a form with those people. They're gonna try to book an appointment or talk with other investors that could potentially help them faster than you. Speed to follow up. You have to be able to give success what they need and success loves speed. That means that you gotta be able to get a hold of them within 60 seconds. As soon as the lead is generated, 60 seconds is the best way to go about it. If you are taking five minutes, that's totally okay. But if you don't take them in 60 seconds, your closing ratio will actually go down. And this is a proven statistics that if you don't follow up fast enough in the first time that the lead comes in, it's gonna be harder to actually get a hold of that lead. But what happens when you already have spoken with that lead, did not close right away, and you still need to follow up. Well, this is also something that a lot of people don't do. And I'm gonna show you a few statistics that I actually found about follow-up. 48% of salespeople never follow up with the prospect. 25% of salespeople make a second contact and just stop. 12% of salespeople only make three contacts and stop. Only 10% of salespeople make more than three contacts. What this means is that the top salespeople are actually making more money because they're now adding follow-up to their bottom line. One of these examples is my business partner, Omer Block. He actually used to have over 40% of his deals coming from follow-up. He is the king of follow-up and I'm actually gonna leave a link to his follow-up training that we did internally in the YouTube video about following up like a beast where he uses things like iMessage, video calls, text messaging from a different number, sending memes, sending stickers, and being funny about the follow-up so you can get a hold of those people once again. Let's continue with the stats. 2% of sales are made on the first contact. 3% of sales are made on the second contact. 5% of sales are made on the third contact. 10% of sales are made on the fourth contact. And 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. That means that if you're not calling them, at least five to 12 times in the first two weeks, three weeks of them coming in, especially the first week, you're gonna lose that sale to someone else or your prospect is just gonna forget about you and it's gonna be harder for you to get a hold of them. Remember that they don't have your number saved. They never have made contact with you. They have not had a clear quality conversation with you. And if you don't have a quality conversation with people, then that's not gonna help you with the sale. So the answer to this is with follow-up, always do better and always do more. The third thing is gonna be, guess what? Lead conversion. So in order to create a sustainable $100,000 a month plus business in the real estate space, you need a repeatable sales process. You need to turn whatever you have right now that is talking to sellers into a manufacturing plant. There is was, there was a reason why Ford is able to accomplish so many cars. And back in the day, it was impossible to mass manufacture so many cars and make a lot of people happy. You needed to create a manufacturing plant. And that means that if all of these cars are gonna be somewhat equal at the end of the product, then you gotta create a step-by-step -step process and a system that makes your sales almost the same every single time. From discovery call, to the pre-pitch, to the pitch, to objection handling, to closing the deal and following up. 
So if you don't have that, then you're probably gonna have poor results, especially when you start actually hiring people. One of the few things that I did was that I actually signed up to sales trainings and sales coachings to become a better sales manager. I've had mentors like Jordan Belfort, Cole Gordon, Alex Hermosi, Jeremy Miner, Sergio Tabares, and throughout time, I have learned different frameworks to actually do a sales process. A very simple sales process that you gotta think about is when the lead is generated and you follow up with that lead, get a hold of that lead, how you're gonna do your discovery call, which is split in a few of series of steps. It could be from your introduction and connecting with the seller to setting the frame and setting the agenda, and then actually qualifying the current situation of that seller, then qualifying that seller and the property of the seller, then knowing what's their desired situation of that seller, and then setting an appointment for you to actually pitch them an offer. And then when you're gonna pitch them an offer, which is your game plan and how you're gonna help them sell the property, well, you have to remind them all about their pain points, remind them why they're here, and then ultimately do a pitch. And after the pitch, you have to be able to remove any objection that could potentially come up, and the same thing happens in the discovery call. Once you have removed all the objections potentially that could ever happen, then you're gonna drop the offer or drop the price, and this is where you go into objection handling mode. After objection handling, you gotta be able to close the sale and actually get that contract. This is a very simple framework that you could actually follow. And to actually learn from the very best, you can actually follow people like Steve Trank, Eric Klein, even, Jeremy Miner, even though he's not in the REI space, will teach you frameworks that you can actually use for your business. And while this is separate to actually training and getting better at sales, you actually need to track your KPIs. If you're not tracking your sales KPIs and knowing where you are, how many offers you're sending every single day, how many quality conversations you're actually having, how many appointments you have actually attended, how many demos or game plan calls, offer calls you actually have done, What's your closing ratio? What's your show up ratio? How many follow-ups have you done that day? And many other KPIs are important for you to track as a salesperson and a sales manager, then you're not gonna improve any of this if you actually don't track them. Because remember that what gets measured gets improved. So always remember, when you start a coaching program, when you start a Legion channel, whenever you start with a new technology, whenever you hire a new team member, whenever you have a new marketing system, always be open for feedback always be receptive to receive feedback from those professionals that have it. And it actually, in Hessel Media, we have marketing and sales experts that have gone through this hundreds of times and helped clients, like the ones that you're seeing on the screen from hesselmedia.com, actually achieve success with online marketing. So you can always go to hesselmedia.com to set up your processes, systems, and your marketing channels to get more motivated seller appointments and live transfers using online marketing which is Facebook, Google, Instagram, YouTube. Or you can actually go to the description below and check out all the other marketing channels from Outbound Marketing that are also very useful to go and take a look at. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for you, the, all the marketing channels that you can check out, all the sales trainings that you can check out, all the systems that you can check out. So remember to always be closing deals. Follow me on Instagram at estenick. Check out other videos that we have in this YouTube channel. Uh, hit that thumbs up for the like button and click on subscribe if you really got some value out of this video. I'm going to be creating more of these videos that are highly valuable for REIs, business owners, or anyone that is really watching and looking to scale their business because I really care about helping you get educated on the few things that I have actually learned on my journey to become a multi-seven-figure business owner.